Now these are our famous Christmas trees, uh, the Picea Albertiana conica. And they're not sold as Christmas trees, they're quite big. And I'm going to make them into bonsai. They are hugely popular with my customers. And I'm going to show you how you can style them. I have shown them before in different sizes, but I'll just go through the process again because uh, there's no harm in repeating what I do because I do them as partly trained trees and people like to buy them. So I'll just take at random, let's see, they're all different, and they're all single stem. So let's just take these two and show you what we do with it and then we will get started. So here is the plant. These uh, Alberta spruce, I call it dwarf Alberta spruce. And it's so well grown that they have branches from right down here. And it's every bit, I would say, 70 to 80 centimeter tall. Now, do I need all that height? Probably not. So let me go through the process again, because every time I explain it and repeat it, you will learn something. So the first thing I always do with any plant that you buy from a nursery is to take it out of the pot and see where the actual roots start from. Because although it is planted deep, you will find that they have invariably potted it deeper than they need to be. So I'm going to tease the roots and show you. Not with the bottom yet. We just tease from the surface to find the start of the tree because the way the roots go into the soil also provides the basis for the good root system or the Japanese word nebari which is used a lot simply means the surface roots. So you want good surface roots so we will tease away and see what is below. We always say that if a tree just goes straight in the ground without any signs of surface roots, then it's just like a telegraph pole or an electric pole. It doesn't look like a tree. It just looks like a post sunk in the ground. So you see, just by teasing away, you see I've already exposed about one inch of extra trunk before I come to the base of the tree. So that is something you should always do with any nursery material. Very often trees that are grown on nurseries, they're not uh, grown so well. These are extremely well grown. These we buy from commercial wholesale nurseries. And there's not a single dead branch right to the base. There you are, that's the lovely base. Can you see it? Thick base there, really looks like an old tree. So I always say that you don't need the branches starting from uh, so low. So we will remove some of these. See, because when you wire the branch down, it is too low. You need to show some trunk. So let's get rid of these. And these are dwarf Alberta spruce, by the way, they grow from cuttings ever so easily. That's why they are so easy to produce. That's a perfect heel cutting, they will root. Okay, so let's get rid of some more. All these very low, lovely branches, but nothing has been wasted. While these lower branches have been growing, it has helped to thicken the trunk. Can you see how thick the trunk is? Now that thickness of trunk has certainly come from them leaving the low branches there. If they had not left the low branches, it would not have thickened so well. So if we still press the branch down, it's still too low. You can make it a tree that has these very low spreading branches, but this is not the sort of image I want. I might do that on another tree to show you what it looks like, but for my uh, liking and my taste, I prefer to show much more trunk. So I'm going to go up the tree and then start from a bit higher up. So even from here, I can start making the, the tree. 
always remember too that you don't want thick branches because thick branches like this don't provide good contrast with the thickness of the trunk. If you use thin branches like this, thin branches contrasting with that trunk makes the trunk look thicker. So always try and use the thin branches if you can and that will give you a much better effect. Now I always begin by wiring the bottom pairs and then as I proceed I then wire the next layer. So don't try and jump the gun by going too far up the top because you want to do each pair, see how it looks and then go on to the next one. So for this uh, thickness of branch, I have a selection of different sizes of wires. This is two, two and a half and three. I've always t told you that there's no hard and fast rule as to what thickness of wire will wire a particular thickness of branch because every situation is different. Every situation is different because the tree could be young and it would not be so stiff and difficult to bend. If the tree is older, it would be more difficult to bend. So there are no hard and fast rules. You've just got to use common sense and just see what works. Okay, I'll put the two branches there. And although it's coming straight, I can always do a little zigzag like this. If you look, see that little zigzag like that can shorten the branch. And then you zigzag this one as well. And then that could shorten the branch and make it look more interesting. So that one shorten. Now do I need this one? I've got to decide what side I'm going to use as the front. Okay, I don't think I'm going to keep the tree that tall. I certainly don't want to make the tree so tall. So let's take some of this off. Let me take that off for a start and see where I get. And then checking the nebari again, the front, which side looks nice. This is not so nice. Okay, these two branches would make a nice first branch. Okay, now with this branch coming out here, I clearly don't want it. So the first two branches are those two. And the reason why I chose those two, let me just cut this off, is because we always say that the first two branches are the welcoming branches, like the arms like that. And you hold your arms out there like this, not like that swimming like that, but this way. So they should embrace you. So these two branches should be embracing you. And then the next one is that one at the back. You want some at the back to give some density at the back. So I shorten these a bit. And then I proceed to wire the next two. Now these next two are slightly thicker than the other ones that I had just wired. So I will now use a slightly thicker piece of wire. So I'm going up to two and a half mil. When I wire the two branches together, I always go around the trunk because that gives it some stability. So I go around the trunk like that and wire it. I could have easily wired from one branch to the other, but I find that if you go around the trunk, that is more effective. Everyone has their own ways of doing things. As I always say, there is no absolutely right and wrong way. I think if you become so arrogant, as a teacher and say that there's only one way to do it. I think that is not giving the student um, the right mindset because we always try to show people that there are other ways of doing it. It doesn't have to be always that particular way. And that is how I take my bonsai. So that is there. Now again, to reinforce, I do a little zigzag to make it more interesting zigzag like that and then these pads these are beautiful pads look at all that growth lovely growth and they can be trimmed quite hard like this so this is the back side now this is the front with the trunk 
open. Now next branch can be, now we've got to decide where the next layer of branches are going to be. Because now supposing I brought this branch down, if you look down, you will see that this branch, if I brought it down, is going to cloud this one. So I think this is going to be too close. So probably the next branch, let's see, or could we use it here, use it there. Okay, bite the bullet as we say, get rid of this one. I want to keep the front open as much as possible. Now, if, if I take this branch down, I've got a back branch already there. Do I need that? It's maybe too much. I think I might have brought this down. See, this clouds this space. But if I brought this down, this is better so I can get rid of this branch. So I hope you can understand the way I'm thinking and choosing the branch. So that gives me more space like that. Then this one, if I brought it down, this is too close to that. So I won't need this one. So probably these two could be okay and they won't interfere too much with them. So we do these two like that. Now these two are thinner than the ones I've just done. So I revert to the two millimeter. Now again, going around the trunk and then taking it out there. And then this one over here. These Pisces or Spruce have a beautiful fragrance, absolutely divine fragrance. So that gives you spacing. Can you see the spacing between that? So over there, I've removed two branches just to create the space. Okay, so the next one, that one I think is too close. See, that one's going to be too close. So if that's too close, get rid of this one. So you've got to look at each level as you go along to decide. Okay, I've removed that. So that should be about right. Now, what about this one? This one again is too close to this one. So we won't use this one because this is too close. So get rid of that. Then let's try these two. These two could work over there. So that's fine. Well, I could even use this one. Okay, I can use these ones. All right, okay, we use these two first, these two. Now, again, they're slightly thinner, so I'm going to revert to the two mil wire. So these two branches together. I don't let all the branches overhang each other. I will stagger them so that they don't overhang. Then the next one, do I need that one? That's too close to that. So that I can get rid of. So you can see how I'm proceeding. I have to just wire a pair of branches and then examine the next situation to see whether that branch is needed or not. So always looking at the front. So do I need this one? This could be clouding this one. So probably not. This one, I'm not sure. That can go that way. So that won't interfere too much. So I'll keep that one. This one could probably come this. Let's see which way. Okay, 
Okay, I think I will do these two now. Okay, so then we do these two. These two I will use two and half. See, there's nothing there, so I may have to be a bit careful. Okay, right. Now, see, there's so many branches here, I've got to decide what to do. If I wire these down, it's going to hide that one. So, let's get rid of these two. It's too close. So that can be wired. That can be wired this way, or can be wired this way. Maybe better this. I got to be keep thinking ahead. I got to think what happens there. Okay, I can use those ones. I can use those ones. So these two I can wire. I can wire even these two. And these two. So I've got to keep looking to see what the future disposition of the branches will look like when the others have been pulled down. This one is this one. So this is the back, you can see the back. The back has got far more branches than the front. So the front is fairly open, so that's how we're going. Now let's pull this one down. I think that could be okay, that can be used. That can also be used because I don't want the front to be uh, too bare. I know it needs to be bare, but not too bare. So I'll wire these two. So let's shorten it a little bit. Again, this is a fairly thick branch, so I'm going to use I'm going to use the two and a half. I know that for most beginners, deciding which branch to remove is always a daunting uh, experience. But don't worry, take your time. Because I work fast, it doesn't mean that you have to work fast. Now that one is too close. Now do I need this one? This one is also a bit too close. You can see there are too many here. Can you see there's three there? So I can take that one off. So let's take this one off. You can see already how much I've taken. I've taken more than half the tree off. That's the amount I've taken off. After all, we're making bonsai. Remember the principle, less 
is small. That one at the back, I will decide whether I need it or not. But meanwhile, that can be used, that can be used. These don't need to be used. All right, let's wipe these two and see if that's coming on nicely like that. Now this branch, I think it's too close to that. Can you see? If I bend it down, it's too close to the ones that are already wired. So I think I can take the decision quite easily that I can remove this one. Don't need this one. So I've got these two. Now keep progressing up the trunk to see. Now if I use this one, this one is in fact too close. This one is too close to this one. So, get rid of it, it's too close. Now this one is too close to this one. So it's going to make it look too congested, so I'll get rid of this one. I don't need this one. That little one at the back can go in that direction, so I'll, no, I'll get rid of it. I can use this one to give the back branch. Now that one look quite nice. I'm now getting to the apex, so I've got to be careful what I do, because I need to terminate the apex somehow. I don't want it to keep growing taller and taller. So already it's looking quite nice. So we will, we could do these two. Now this one is a drift, I'll wire this. I think that and that can be wired. These two can be wired. Let's go methodically, don't miss anything. So we wire these two, so we can use the two mil wire. You notice I'm cutting the wire with the secateurs in case anyone criticizes me. Always remember that these Falco secateurs, it's so well used, I've lost the covering on this. There is a little notch here. Can you see that notch there? That is for cutting wire. So when you see me cutting it, I'm not cutting with the blade, I'm cutting with the notch. So the Falcos is useful in that respect. Okay, so we're going to wire these two. So again, I go round the trunk to give it some stability. And then I take it off this way. So you see, it is really like a real tall conifer that you would find in a forest, in the Scottish forest or Norwegian forest. That's the effect. As we get to the top, it's getting a bit denser, which is quite natural. Now this one here, if I pull it down, it's too close to these two. So we will get rid of this one. Always test it to see if it is too close or too far, but if it's too close, then you get rid of it. Now, these two, if I wire down, because at the top we want it fairly dense, this would look okay. Or I could even, I've got to look for an apex somewhere. So I think I found an apex here. So you can you see, if you come close, you see, this one is going up over there. So that can be a new apex. So I can cut, I've, I've already cut that much off. So I'm going to cut this one. Can you see me cutting it? So let me <coughs> use the secateurs. I'm going to keep that one. So I'm going to cut this off. That lump comes off. There you are. I'm going to use that as the apex now. So I can wire these two. So I've shortened the tree by about 30 centimeter almost. It is now, I would say, 45, maybe 50 centimeters. So 70 centimeter down to about 50 centimeter. I've reduced the height, but nice thick trunk. All the balance is there. So now these two, 
This is fairly thin, so we go for two mil wire. Again, go around the trunk. These are the sort of things that most people can make without much difficulty. And the object of my YouTube videos is not to show you these great masterpieces, it's to enable ordinary humble mortals who are just starting in bonsai to enjoy the hobby. After all, most of what we do should be enjoyable. If it's not enjoyable, there's no point in doing it. So then we come to the apex, so we're virtually there. I keep that little apex there, so we wire some of these down. That's another one at the back, I need that background, so I've got these there, so I can wire these two together. Always looking for pairs. So I've used just two grades of wire. I've used two and two and a half mil wire for this particular tree. I've always maintained that two mil wire is probably the single most useful grade of wire that there is for bonsai. That is aluminum wire, I'm not talking of copper wire. the top fairly dense rather than just an arrow pointing upwards so let's wire these two and then I think that should be almost the end go. I'll leave the top like that. All I now need to do is go and trim the ends off because by trimming the ends I'm going to force more bud break and I'm going to get more pads coming out all around the tree from every side. This is the back side. Pot this up into a plastic training pot and I will show you the after uh, image with it in its plastic training pot. So I reckon I've removed maybe 60% nearly two-thirds of the original foliage. So lots of lovely cuttings over there and I will show you just for good measure I hope I always am conscious of boring people too much by talking too much. So this is again the standard tree that we started off with. You see the difference? See the difference between the two? From that to that. And let me just go through the process again. I won't probably do this. Uh, so to repeat, take it out of the pot. Explore the trunk, see which side is nice, tease the roots and then find the apex and then take the branches from high up and I will do this in another style. Uh, I could even take the branches from high up but I think this has got nice spread of branches so I will do this in a slightly different way. So I'm teasing away and see the lovely root base there. See these conifers are just grown in this uh, peaty type soil, peat and bark, and they're so strong. 
So it just goes to show that the compost is not that critical. In fact, the compost is probably too rich. Now there's an ugly root here. So you can see there's this root here. It's going round and round the pot, so I'm going to get rid of it because I don't think I need this ugly root. Can you see that this root there? And I think it's a bit high. It's going, not going to add anything to the nebari. And because this tree has got such a lot of lovely roots, I can afford to take that off. Now there's also, I don't know whether that's a girdling root or not. Sometimes you get these roots going round and round the trunk and it can strangle the tree. That's why it's called a girdling root. So I don't need that. And this has got a lovely spread over there. Now that's a very thick branch there, which has helped to thicken the tree. So I will see where the apex is. So the, because this is so low, I think it's done its job as a sacrificial, so I get rid of it. Sometimes you can use a gin, but the branches are not thick enough for gin, so I won't bother. I think don't use gin just for the sake of using gin. A lot of people use gins because, oh, it's the thing to do. So the end uh, objective is just to make lots of gins. Now the question is, do I need a low branch or not? I can start from here. I'm faced with some decisions to make. I thought I would start the tree with very low branches and see what happens, just, just for the heck of it. Let's see if I use low branches, what would happen? Okay, so that's a low one, this is a low one. This is also a low one, but this is very thick, so because this is so thick, I will probably get rid of it straight away. Can you see the difference in thickness? If you come close, you can see this one and this one. This is much thicker than this. So because it's too thick a branch, I will get rid of it. I prefer to use the thinner branches. So this is the ideal thickness for the branch. So I think we can use that as a back, that as a back. So we're going to use low branches in this instance to see how it works. If it doesn't work, we will probably uh, revert to another design. But let's see if it works. If it works, well and good. If it doesn't, then nothing lost. In bonsai, it's very seldom that you would get identical clones. Even the mass-produced trees that you get from China, the Chinese elms, if you look at them closely, they might appear to be clones, but there's always a slight difference in them. So, I'm just going to wire these two. So the object of this exercise is to see what happens if we have low spreading branches. Now, although we're talking of low spreading branches, and uh, these two, I think one of them needs to go. We don't need all of them. So which one? This one and that one. So this one can go. We don't need this one. Now, if I use this as the front, would I need this? This is the front, remember? Now this, if this is the front, this is going to be in the way, really. So I really don't need this one. Or do I need it? Well, let's try that. Let's try using this. Okay, now there are three branches here. One, two, three. Now we can use two, but get rid of the middle one. Now we need two many together. So I've got spacing between these two, so I can wire these two now.
These are particularly nice and bushy plants. I've seen some sold in nurseries where the growth is not so dense, usually very lax. So you do have to choose carefully because different growers have different styles of growing and some are even better than others, some are less so. So as I say, this particular one is particularly nice. Now this is the front. I can't remember which was the front. This is quite a nice front. This one will be the back. This is going to be the I don't want now this, if I used as a branch, would be poking too much in my eye. So I get rid of this one. I can use that one. Can probably use this one. So we will wire these two together. Around the trunk once. Because this part is quite a bit higher up the trunk, so I've wrapped it around the trunk once, just to traverse the trunk, to go up the trunk. If I put this down, it'll be overhanging this front, so I will get rid of this one. So this one can come to the front, slightly off, off the front. similar thickness branches. <clears throat> Getting a bit tricky. Okay, these two could be wired. That's too much over there. I don't need this one. That could be used. Do I need this one? Get him 
bit tricky though. There are lots of branches. I'm taking mainly the thicker ones out. Again, a thick branch I'm going to get rid of. Look at that. Over here, I'm going to get rid of this. Now, just to show you this inverse taper business, because there were so many branches there, can you see the swelling here? It's become rounded here. So, always be careful of too many branches growing from one point. If you have too many branches growing from one point, it makes this inverse taper effect. So, if you can spot it at a fairly young stage, it's always a good idea to get rid of it. Otherwise you get that bulging, bulging effect, which is not nice. So that one can be done there. Still too many branches there. Probably use that one. Now I can use these two. Is there or do I need it? No, it's probably if I put that down. No, I don't think I need this one. Okay, that little one on its own I need because there's a space here. So I just use very thin wire to wire this one. I've got too much thinner wire. So this one I'm just going to wrap around a trunk that's a branch that's already been wired. So that is that, and take this one out. Because the very thin bands, I'm just putting an open coil. <laughs> so this has got low sweeping branches, much lower. I could have started the tree with the branches from much higher up, but I've decided to keep it low, low spreading. Okay, can use those two. This can be used. This can be used. Okay, we're getting there. So I'm now going into one and a half millimeter wide because the branches out here are much, much thinner. So you've got to keep adjusting the greater wire to the thickness of the branch you're wiring. If it's too thin, it doesn't do the job. If it's too thick, it's a waste and it also can be a bit too aggressive. So this is still the front. I keep forgetting to mention the front and the back because I'm so used to um, working without a marker. Because many people use a marker to mark the front. And by marker, let me just reinforce what I used to show people. If you just take a piece of aluminum wire and then if this is the front, I just put it like that to remind me that I'm always working with this as the front of the tree. So I don't forget what I'm doing. So that is that. That is going to be, if it's too close, I can do that. I might even do this. Let's see. I think this is too close. I think that would be better. So let's get rid of this one. Wind this down. This and that can be used. These can be used. Okay. So we wind these two. <coughs> Ok, 
Okay. Got several branches there. Because there's so many, I don't need too many at one point, so I'll get rid of this one. So I have these two I can wire, or I can just do those. No, I could use these two because there's a space over here. So if it's overhanging, just move it apart so that it doesn't overhang the other branch. So we're getting to the top. So let's find the apex. Now this is a bit lanky there, so let's get rid of this for a start. That's a good eight inches I got rid of. These are a bit longer. So this is going to be like a parkland tree with low spreading branches. Okay, that can be wired, this can be wired. That can go to the back. That can go to the back. We can wire these two. I don't usually like doing these very long videos where I repeat, but I think that repetition is always useful as a learning process. I'm involved in dance and I used to be involved in swimming and these endless drills going up and down the pool improving your technique uh, and same with the dance the more you practice the more you become perfect so that one and that one now do I need these two yes I can use these two because as you get to the top you want it to be more dense. So I think that can be an apex, so I can get rid of this. See, this is going up this way, so I'm going to take that off. So you can see what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut that bit off. I'm going to use this as the apex, so we're going to get that off. So that's going to be the apex. The crown should always be a bit dense, otherwise it's just like a feather sticking feather in the cap sticking up and that doesn't look like a mature tree. Mature trees always have a nice crown. So if you have a crown that is visible that is much better. The effect is much better. So these two, I think by now all of you who have watched my videos should have understood the two branch principle. It is such an important part of wiring. And yet, very often on my own classes too, I've mentioned two branch principles. And what do you expect? You see someone trying to wire one branch on its own. And it doesn't work. It flops around. So when it flops around, I said, what did you do? I said, I forgot. <laughs> Just making the crown a little more dense. If I place it down, I can see that is quite okay. It's enough foliage. So, so I can, they're still dense over there. So those two will be wired. There's a one at the back. I dare say in commercial nurseries where people are mass producing these, a tree like this shouldn't take more than, I would say, 20 minutes to do. But if I've taken, say, best part of half an hour, that isn't bad. But if you are doing it from scratch and have never done it before, if you take half a day, that is quite good. So take time to think, think out that thought process. Ask yourself, do I need this branch? Do I need that branch? 
uh, is it clouding or interfering with the other side and so on or interfering with the branch below so that is how you think and without going too far I think if this is the front a little bit of a round crown This is a bit dense there, that can go to that, let me just wire that thin one. And uh, this one is on its own. No, these two are there. You can also wire something that has been wired already. So that's going to get my anchor. So this odd branch on its own, you can always wire to an existing wide branch. So, if we look at the two, if we go quite low, so this tree has got much lower branches. This one, the branches are a bit higher, but as I say, you can even take the branches to start from here and it will still look nice. So they really look like mature trees because the trunks are so thick. I'm now going to pot them into plastic training pots. We'll show you the end result. So here's the final, what we call the mug shots of the Pisces that I did. That is all the prunings that we prune from those two trees. That is a typical unshaped, unpruned Picea that we made it from. And this is the end result, looking like a parkland tree, what we call the formal upright style. Most people seem to imagine that all bonsai have to be curly shaped and twisted and gnarled. They have their own fascination, but the formal upright, bolt upright trees are beautiful in their own right, because this is how you would see these great big conifers growing in nature. The one on the left I did deliberately as a tree with low branches. The one on the right has slightly higher branches and I could have even taken it much higher. A little tip, if you make several of these, you can plant three or even five in a big dish and make a nice forest with these, quite widely spaced. So these would make a lovely image. So these were done very simply and the trunks I would say is at least looking at it inch and a half to two inch thick there and that one too is also quite thick and if I can get my tape measure out I will see how tall the trees are from the base it is still about 65 centimeter tall. If you don't include the pot, I would say it is about 60 centimeter, 55 to 60 centimeter tall. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed this little exercise. Still doing the Christmas trees, but slightly more sophisticated using more mature uh, plant material.